You know what? I love playing live. I really do. I, I, I will admit that you get tired and, and uh, you get worn out, especially, you know, with our age. We're getting older and we've been doing this for a long time. But there's an amazing charge you get on stage. And when you know you've done a good show, you feel very good about yourself. It's very rewarding to know you've come off stage and you've played well and you've put on a good show. So, you know, I, I, honestly, I, I really love it again. Yeah, I would I would second that. I, I think this tour we've had more fun than than we've ever had on a tour. And in fact, uh, we were speaking of Neil earlier, and I've never seen Neil happier mm. on a tour. Yeah, uh, it's true. I've never seen him smile so much, which is always a pleasant surprise. <laughs> Back in the time, we used to tour very very strenuously. You know, we we would do long tours and we work really really hard, uh, and they were difficult, particularly if you have family. And after thirty years. It, uh, it gets a little tough sometimes. But I think after Vapor Trails, I think having that absence for four years um, just really made us realize how uh, fragile a thing that can be. And, uh, you know, I think we love playing live, absolutely, and we love recording. They're two very different things. And I think so long as we can plan it and um, attack it in such a way that we maintain our health and and have a good time and are happy, you know, you can do it as long as you as you want. Sure, I also think that obviously what Neil went through in, in the late 90s affected our attitude on everything and once we saw that he was uh, feeling good about recording again and enjoying touring, well it gave us confidence to, uh, to do more. We do most of our improvising in sound check. But during the show, when we decide to improvise in a section of a song, we do it once, and then that becomes the part for the rest of the <laughs> tour. So, you know, the, the show is, is, uh, has a choreography about it, and uh, you need to be in the right place at the right time. So there's not really a whole lot of room to jam or, or improvise in that sense. Yeah, we're pretty much slaves to structure, and, and uh, although there is a little leeway night to night for a little bit of movement, as Alex says, as soon as we do something new, we all go, hey, that's cool, and we, done, and we keep doing it. So uh, uh, that's just our nature. Some songs are impossible to play because you can't get into the spirit of them anymore. It's not that they're difficult to play, but you just don't feel them anymore. Yeah, I don't think physically there'd be any song that we couldn't play live, yeah. particularly now. Yeah, we could. With the technology available. We could figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's not cheating if you played it in well, the I first place. The first gig that we did was at a drop-in center in a church basement for probably 40 people. And we played, I think, six or seven songs and just played them over and over. Uh, <laughs> we didn't have a mic stand for the mic, so we used a lamp, you know, a tall lamp, and we glued or we taped the mic <laughs> to the side of the lamp, and we shared an amplifier, and, and we made ten dollars. And we went to uh, a delicatessen afterwards. Yeah, and we had French fries and gravy, I remember. Yeah, and Cokes, and we planned our future <laughs> that night. See, we're not so old, we can remember those. <laughs> but it was such an exciting thing. I, I can, I can re just, I can f remember how it was sitting in the booth of the restaurant and how exciting it was and, you know, being up there playing your instruments as, you know, as innocently as that was as young, fresh musicians. It was still so exciting. And there were a whole bunch of different first shows for yeah. us. And then it was the first show we did with Neil, which was really, in, in many ways, our first show together, which we were opening for Uriah Heep and Manfred Mann's Earth Band in Pittsburgh in 1974. And I remember that very clearly. We were mm -hmm. playing as people were coming in. We had exactly 26 minutes to play. And uh, by the time people had found their seats, we were finished. Uh, but it was really exciting, and we were really nervous. And that was really our first gig. There was also the first gig after the whole tragedy with Neil, where it was such a profound gig. You know, throughout so many points of the show, I think we all had you know, a lump in our throats, and uh, we were just so excited to be back together and have that opportunity to play again. And, it was really a magical night. And that was, a, and a lot of it was because the audience was so incredible that people yeah. had really come from all over the world to this 
gig in the United States and, and they were holding up signs and they were all so happy and we looked at each other and went, yeah, this is cool, you know. Yeah, there were people crying in the first few rows. It was really touching. Yeah, but I think that's because we were really too loud that night. I think Alex would agree with me that it's impossible to predict really from one year to the next. And I think after we went through the difficulties with Neil's personal tragedies, I think we really learned that life is so unpredictable that we prefer just to look at it one project at a time. Right now, I would say there's a very good feeling between the three of us, and we love what we're doing. And uh, we're coming off an album that I think was the best record we've done in a long time. And so we feel very rejuvenated. So I don't see an end in sight at the moment. So uh, what's but going to knows. happen with, with the industry? It's obviously mutating into some sort of digital form. And my only concern is that two things happen, that the rights of the artist are protected and, and that the quality remains high. You know, I have a lot of beefs with down, free downloading just from a rights point of view and from a quality point of view. I mean, I don't care what anyone says. You listen to an MP3 versus a, you know, a properly mixed digital record that people have been slaving over, and you really can't make that comparison. They don't sound the same. Uh, so those are my concerns for the future. Uh, you know, we've been fortunate. We've been around a long time. We've, we've been very successful. You know, whatever happens with the music industry affects the young bands a lot more than it's going to affect us. You know, we've we've done very well. Uh, so my concern is for future musicians and making sure that the act of a few single uh, artists don't uh, ruin the future for young up-and-coming musicians. Well, uh, it's hard for me to give advice because I think our career has been very unusual. You know, that it's been a slow you know, grind in a way, and, and we've been very, very fortunate, but, and the music industry is changing, you know, very rapidly. Uh, and so, in another five years, who knows if there'll still be CDs available to be bought. So, obviously music will carry on, and there'll always be some way of getting music uh, to people. And uh, my only advice to young musicians is play well, learn your craft, and, and keep your fingers crossed, you know. Not all of them. <laughs> <laughs>